Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding EMC, Artificial Hands. This presentation provides a brief technical explanation of artificial hands and how they're used in EMC testing. Let's start by discussing what's meant by a handheld device. Many devices come into contact with humans during normal operation. This includes electrical devices, such as power tools, hair dryers, kitchen appliances, etc. But it also includes electronic devices, such as keyboards, touch screens, and mice, as well as telephones, handsets, and microphones. Many medical or patient couple devices would also fall into this category. In most cases, the usual point of contact is the human hand, but contact with other parts of the body is also possible. In addition, there may be multiple points of contact, for example, a drill or other tool that's normally held with two hands. Any contact between a device and the human body creates a combination of a resistive and capacitive path to ground. This path can affect the level of any undesired or disturbing signals that are emitted by the device. Therefore, some EMC testing standards require that the effect of the human hand be simulated during testing. This is particularly true when the device or equipment under test has either a plastic or insulating housing and or has metallic parts that are not connected to ground. The way in which this coupling is simulated is by means of something called an artificial hand. CISPR 16.2 describes the construction and connection of an artificial hand. This is defined as an RC series circuit consisting of a 220 picofarad capacitor and a 510 ohm resistor, both with a given tolerance. These are connected to ground and to the EUT at a point referred to as the M terminal. As we'll show on the next slide, the connection to insulated points on the EUT is made using conductive foil, typically 60 millimeters wide, wrapped around each contact point. If the EUT contains any non-rotating metallic pieces, these are directly connected to point M as well. Let's look at this graphically using a handheld drill as an example. Strips of conductive foil approximately 60 millimeters wide are wrapped around the two locations where the drill would normally be held, and these are both connected to point M of our artificial hand circuit. In addition, any non-rotating metalwork, such as point C, should also be directly connected to point M on the artificial hand. Most conducted emissions testing requires the use of a so-called Line Impedance Stabilization Network, or LISN. Therefore, the RC series circuit used to create the artificial hand is often built into commercial LISNs. An attachment point or plug on the front represents the M point of the RC network and is used to make the connections to the equipment under test. This point on the LISN is typically marked artificial hand. We won't go into detail about LISNs in this presentation, but please see the separate presentation, Understanding LISNs, if you'd like to learn more about LISNs and the role they play in conducted EMC testing. Let's end with a brief summary. Many electrical and electronic devices are operated while in contact with part of the human body, most often the hand. This contact can change the levels of undesired or disturbing emissions produced by the equipment under test. For this reason, some types of conducted emissions testing require simulation of this contact by means of a so-called artificial hand. This is modeled as an RC circuit consisting of an approximately 220 picofarad capacitor in series with an approximately 510 ohm resistor. For devices with insulated housings, foil is wrapped around those parts of the EUT that normally come in contact with human hands. Any exposed metal parts are directly connected to the RC circuit as well. Note that in most cases, the RC network simulating the human hand is built into a Line Impedance Stabilization Network, or LISN, and is accessible via connector on the LISN's front panel. This concludes our presentation, Understanding EMC, Artificial Hands. If you'd like to learn more about EMC testing, LISNs, or other EMC-related topics, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.